Well, it, it is wonderful to see all of you. Uh, and uh, by the way, it's great uh, to see even more of you since the strikes are over. Some of you may know there was a, a strike uh, in Hollywood. And as somebody who cares a lot about the power of workers in this country, and as the father of somebody who writes in film, I am glad that both the writers and the actors came to an agreement that recognizes their worth and their work. Uh, this is also Veterans Day, so I just want to make, you know, I, I want to express thank you to the people who serve this country. Is one of the great honors of my life was being Commander in Chief, and I witnessed firsthand uh, the extraordinary sacrifices that both our veterans and our families made uh, on behalf of us. And uh, so we're, we could not be prouder of them. So in, in 2013, I had the honor of awarding uh, Bayard Rustin the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And, and for those of you who may not be aware, this is the highest civilian honor that can be conferred for people who have helped to shape our country and move it to a more perfect union. And back then, I described Bayard as somebody with unshakable optimism, nerves of steel, and most importantly, a faith that if a cause is just and people are organized, nothing can stand in our way. And it is hard to overstate Bayard Rustin's influence on the civil rights movement. He was a pioneer of freedom rights to desegregate interstate bus travel. He went on a bus in 1942 and got arrested for not sitting in the back. 20 years before the publicized freedom rights took place. That's how far ahead he was of his time. He helped introduce the Gandhian concept of nonviolent resistance, helped advise Dr. King, served as one of Dr. King's key advisors in the Montgomery bus boycott. He helped organize the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. He mentored countless young activists to fight for equality and for freedom. So this is one of the seminal figures that changed the course of American history. Without him, I might not have been president. You might not be sitting where you are today. And yet, for decades, Bayard Rustin was denied his rightful place in history. Most of you probably didn't read about him necessarily when you were in elementary school, or middle school, or maybe even high school. And the main reason was because back in the 40s and 50s, he was openly gay. Imagine that. Think about that. Here's somebody who was courageous enough to be who he was despite the fact that he was almost certainly going to be ostracized, fired from jobs, pushed aside. And that's, in fact, what happened. Arrested multiple times. And, and no medal can change what happened to him. No film can ease the pain of generations of Americans who face discrimination because of who they are and who they love, but Michelle and, and, and my hope is that by telling Bayard's story, more people will appreciate leaders like him who brought America closer to its highest ideals. Even though they weren't in the limelight, even though they operated behind the scenes because that's what it takes sometimes to change. I mean, these days, we're so obsessed with 
that 15 minutes of fame and everybody wants to be an influencer. And everybody wants to be liked. But it turns out that that's not where change happens. And we can honor the legacy of Bayard Rustin and others by taking our place in this long march towards true equality. Now, it's, it's also true that while Rustin tells Bayard's story, it's not just about him, as you'll see. It's also about the thousands of ordinary folks from all walks of life. Most of them no older than the students who were in attendance today, who showed the world what America looks like at its best who forced America to look in the mirror and, and say, is that who we are or, or can we be better? And their work and their spirit continues to give us a roadmap for confronting the injustices of our time. 